So applying special right triangles, section 5.8 today. Um, what was 5.7 about? Who reminds me we talked about on Monday? Pythagorean theorem. What was Pythagorean theorem? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, and that works for right triangles um, where you know you have A, B, and C. Well, today we're going to talk about there are some special, unique qualities about some right triangles as well. And we're going to talk about those special qualities today. Um, the first one we're going to talk about is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Okay. If you look down here in front of the, in front, up here on the wall, the posters, these are a couple of two helpful posters that we are going to use today. Um, just kind of use as a reference. But here's what it says today. In a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So first off, what type of triangle is that if it's 45, 45, 90? It's a right... A right what? A right isosceles. It is a right isosceles triangle. Okay? Um, in a right isosceles triangle, isosceles means that two sides are the same. Okay? Uh, this is the unique property. Both legs are congruent, and the length of the hypotenuse is the square root of 2 times the length of the leg. So, for instance, say, it's not really a lot of really math you got to do. It's, okay, I want you to identify the special properties to help you solve these. For example, if my legs are 8, my hypotenuse is going to be 8 square root of 2. If my legs are 23, my hypotenuse is going to be 23 square root of 2. Notice, this is what the relationship says. The relationship says if the sides are length x, the hypotenuse is going to be x square root of 2. Well, let's throw some numbers in there. What if I said the sides were length of 3 and 3? What's the hypotenuse going to be? 3 square root of 2, right? Okay, let's try another one. What if I tell you the legs are 7 and 7? What's the hypotenuse? 7 square root of 2. 7 square root of 2. That's all we're doing. Well, it's, no, it's going to get tougher, don't worry. What if I said the legs were 12 and 12? What's the hypotenuse? 12 square root of 2. 12 square root of 2. Has everybody seen the pattern going on here? Okay, let's try it the other way now. What if I give you the hypotenuse is, mm, let's go with 11 square root of 2. If the hypotenuse is 11 square root of 2, what are my two legs going to be? 11. Well, they're both going to be 11, right? Okay, let's try another one. What if I give you the hypotenuse is 15 square root of 2? What are the two legs going to be? 15. Well, that's great. Everybody's like, it's pretty easy, Mr. Daly. Nothing, nothing too hard. But what happens if they give me the hypotenuse is 10? Give up. Definitely do not give up. Oh, okay. Shh. Listen. Listen. Now let's take reference here. Notice. If let's say this was, oh, let's say 3 and 3, right? To find the hypotenuse, aren't we just multiplying by the square root of 2? So I do 3 times the square root of 2, which is just 3 square root of 2. Well, if I'm given the hypotenuse and I don't find the legs... I'm just going to divide by, square divide by the square root of 2. So here's what happens. I divide by the square root of 2, which I can't really do. You can't really divide by radical. So what happens here is you simplify it. Well, here's your answer you're going to get, 5 square root of 2. Does anybody see what the relationship there? It's half, and then you multiply by the square root of 2. So if I have a 45, 45, 90, and my hypotenuse is a whole number, I'm going to divide it by 2 and multiply by the square root of 2. So let's say, let's say it's not 10. Let's say this is now 30. What are my two legs going to be now? 15. It's going to be 15 square root of 2 and 15 square root of 2. Okay, so it's half, and then take it times the square root of 2. Just use that information and try these four. So I'm going to try numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. All of them are 45, 45, 90 triangles. Number 1. Okay, it's a 45, 45, 90. If this is a side of 17, what's that side right there going to be? That one's 17. Which means my hypotenuse is going to be 17 square root of 2. Nice job. 2. I have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. What's my side opposite the 45 angle going to be? Which means my hypotenuse is going to be 22 squared or 2. Nice job. 
three. Ooh, recognize on three. What do I got here? I have the hypotenuse is eight. The hypotenuse is eight. That's that weird one. I need to find my two legs. What am I going to do now, Katie? Four square two. It's four square two. What'd you do? I divided by two and multiplied by the square root of two. So it's four square root of two. Nice job, Katie. And four. I'm giving the hypotenuse again. I need to find my two legs. Chris, what's the legs? Definitely, Third, 25. they're both Third, going to be 25. 25. Why are they both 25 here? Yeah, because if I divide this one by the square root of 2, well, just my square root of 2s cancel out. I'm giving just 25 now. Okay? So you have to be able to recognize the relationships there. Caden, questions on that? No. Good? Good. Because now we're going to get into the 30, 60, 90 triangles. Okay, now let's look at a 30, 60, 90 triangle. What type of triangle is that? Uh, a scalene, and it's also right, so it's right scalene triangle. In a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the length of the hypotenuse is 2 multiplied by the length of the shorter leg, and the longer leg is the square root of 3 multiplied by the length of the shorter leg. In a 30, 60, 90 triangle, Everything is based off of the short side. For instance, if my short side's 5, my hypotenuse is 10. What am I doing there? I'm just it doubling it, times it by 2. My short side's 11, my hypotenuse is 22. I'm multiplying by 2. Pretty straightforward. So what's the other side for? The long side. What's the relationship between 5 and 5 square root of 3? Times, times it by the square root of 3. 11, 11 square root of 3. I'm taking it times the square root of 3. Here's the relationship right here. You have x, 2x, and x square root of 3. Now, how is it easy to remember? Because one of them is square root of 2, one of them is square root of 3. In a 45, 45, 90, how many different side lengths do I have? 2, square root of 2. In a 30, 60, 90, how many side lengths do I have? 3, three square root of 3. Ah, 2, 2, 3, 3. Makes sense here. Okay, let's try a couple of them if, if I plug it in. What if I tell you that the short side is 3? If the short side is 3, what's my long side? 6. And what's my hypotenuse? 3 squared 3. 3 squared 3. Okay, let's try another one. What if I tell you the short side is 12? What's my hypotenuse? And the long side? 12 squared 3. 12 squared 3. Okay, feeling good. Now let's mix it up here a bit. What if I tell you the hypotenuse is 16? I always want to find the short side first, remember. The hypotenuse is 16, what's my short side? Which means my long side is? A squared of 3. Are we seeing the relationships going on here? Let's try another one, a little tougher here. What if I tell you this one is 2 squared of 3? By the time my long side is 2 squared of 3, what's my short side going to be? 2 and then 4. And then this is going to be? 4. Great stuff, right? Feeling good? Yeah. All right, then comes the tough ones. Nope. What happens if I get a problem like this? Now, if I look at that, first off, is it my short side, long side, or hypotenuse? Definitely not. It's the long side. Hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle, Chris. Right? So I have the long side. I want to find the short side. So remember in a 45, 45, 90, right? Like if this was 8, what were my two legs going to be? 8 or 4. It was 4 square root of 2 and 4 square root of 2, right? Yeah. Didn't we divide by 2 and multiply by square root of 2? Yeah. Okay. 30, 60, 90 triangle. Remember, the relationship was the square root of 3. What do you think we're going to divide by? 3. We're going to divide by 3 and multiply by the square root of 3. So what happens here is you divide by 3, multiply by the square root of 3. My short side is 4 square root of 3. And now, if I want to find my hypotenuse, I double that. What's, eight, what's 4 times 2? So I get 8 square root of 3. These are the shortcuts to this. Okay, and again, I was like, these are shortcuts? No, it is, because the alternate would be you have to use Pythagorean theorem. That gets really rough. So let's try number five here. I'm going to find the values of x and y, give your answer in the simplest radical form. 
Am I given the short side, the long side, or the hypotenuse? Hypotenuse. I'm going to find the short side. What's the relationship? Half. half. What's half 18? Nine. So this is 9? 9 squared. Then I take that times square root of 3, and I get? 9 squared of 3. Boom. There you go. Okay, 6. Quinn, short side, long side, hypotenuse. What do I got? Short side's two, so let's do that hypotenuse first. That one's always easiest. What is it? Four. Awesome. And then I do long side. What's that going to be? Two square three. Two square three. Great work. Seven. Ooh, seven's wow. a doozy. Seven's a tough one right now. What do I have here? Short side, long side, hypotenuse. I have hypotenuse. I always want to find short side first. So what's the short side going to be? Wow. Ooh. Ooh, we are... 0 for 3 right now. Wait, let's think about here. First off, let's go back here. What's the relationship between the long side or the hypotenuse and the short side? Half, right? So it's half, right? So 24 squared to 3 divided by 2, what do I get? 12 square root of 3. Because what's half of 24? 12. So it's 12 square root of 3. I got to include the square root of 3. I can't, I can't divide the square root of 3 by 2. That's a different number. That's what I'm going to get wrong on the test. Because I always think, oh, that one's always going to not have that. Why do you do this? Nope, because there's so many different problems. <laughs> now, it gets a little bit tougher. Now I need to find the long side. What's the relationship between the short side and the long side? Multiply by the square root of 3, right? Yeah. So I need to do 12 square root of 3 times the square root of 3. Well, what's 3 times 3? So I have uh, I have 12 squared to 9. What's square root of 9? So what's 3 times 12? Woo, that one's going to be 36. How many of those are we going to have? A lot? A couple. Okay, here's the, it all comes down to this though. You still need, you need to understand the rules. If you understand the rules, what the relationship is, it's not that bad. Now, 8, 8's another doozy here. Let's think about 8. What do I have? Short side, long side, hypotenuse? Long side. So I need to find the short side. What's the relationship between long side and short side? It's the square root of 3, right? So I need to take 33 divided by 3 and multiply by the square root of 3. So what's 33 divided by 3? So I get 11 square root of 3. And then, what's the relationship between the short side and the hypotenuse? I double it, so that's going to be? 22 squared of 6. 22 squared of 3. 22 squared of 3, because I double it. 11 times 2 is 22. Because really, I really want to do here, read, I'm taking 33. I'm really dividing by the square root of 3, but I can't divide by a radical. So what I do is I rationalize it by multiplying by square root of 3 over square root of 3. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is really square root of 9. So I end up with square root of, or 33 square root of 3 over the square root of 9. Square root of 9 is 3. So 33 divided by 3 is 11. It comes from rationalized denominator. That's algebra right there. That's algebra. That's some intense algebra. Let's try some more. Don't worry about it. We'll try some more. Okay. Take a couple seconds to try these three. 45, 45, 90 triangles. Take a couple seconds to try these three on your own. Let's try number nine. I have the two sides are two and two. Spencer, what's the hypotenuse going to be then? So you're saying all the sides are two? It's an equilateral triangle? What's X going to be here, bud? What's it going to be? So it's four? So it's not a triangle now? It's two square root of two, isn't it? Because relationship is multiplied by the square root of 2. Gentlemen, put it away. Barack, number 10. What did you get for 10? Yeah, both those sides are going to be 4. Eight, 4 and 4. Awesome. 11. Claire, what did I get for 11? 10. Claire, what made that one easy? I already told me the other side was 10, so it's got to be the same. Right? Good. Take a couple seconds, try these two on your own now. 30, 60, 90 triangles. Tyler Wilson, number 12. I have 8. 
Is that the short side, long side, or partners, Tyler? Long side. Eight is not my long side. Eight is actually my hypotenuse. So what's my short side going to be, Tyler? Uh, four. Four. So X is four. And then I find my long side. What's my long side going to be, Tyler? Four squared three. Four squared three. Nice job. Twelve. Becca. Short side, long side, hypotenuse. What do I have? I have the long side here. So I'm going to find the short side. What's the short side going to be, Becca? Seven, which means my hypotenuse is? Fourteen. Nice job. Take a couple seconds. Try these four now. All right, let's walk through these. Pay attention. Listen up. Fourteen. I need to find the hypotenuse. What's the relationship between the short side and the hypotenuse, or the legs and hypotenuse? I need to take it times the square root of 2. So this is really 8 square root of 2 times the square root of 2. Well, what's 2 times 2? So I get 8 square root of 4. What's square root of 4? 2 times 8 is? This comes out to be 16. If you think about going the back side, let's go the other way. 16 divided by 2 times square root of 2 is? Oh, it works. It has to work both ways. 15. I have 10 square root of 3. Short side, long side, hypotenuse, Chris. Short side. I want to find the hypotenuse. I'm going to? Times it by 3. Times it by? 2. 2, so I double it. 20 square root of 3. I get 20 square root of 3. Oh, it's not just 20. No, it's, no, it's, it's 10 square root of 3 times 2 is 20 square root of 3. And now I need to find x. What's the relationship between the short side and the long side? It's x square root of 3. So I'm taking 10 square root of 3 times the square root of 3. What's 3 times 3? So I get 10 square root of 9. What's square root of 9? 10 times 3, and I get 30. There we go. And 16. The hypotenuse is 2 squared 2. Bannister, what are my two sides going to be? 2 and 2. And 17. Do I have short side or long side hypotenuse, Anderson? Long side. So I'm going to find the short side first. So what's the relationship between the long side and the short side? The square root of 3. So I need to take 12 and divide it by 3, because there's 3 sides, and multiply by the, so what's 12 divided by 3? 4, so I get 4 squared of 3, and then I need to double it, and what's y going to be? 8 square root of 3, there it is, here's your assignment.